Welcome in on a Sunday morning, 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's news and talk. And as we do in this time slot, every single week, we are protecting military families with the one and only Chris Brochu of Brochu Law. Chris, how are we doing on a Sunday morning? Doing great, Casey. Good morning. How are you doing? I am good. Glad to hear it. Let's start as we always do, though. Uh, before we do that, actually. Military lending today is what we're going to be talking about, the Military Lending Act. All kinds of information you want to get out there and let military families know about some stuff that's going on that, well, frankly, should not be going on. And you're going to you're gonna give that information. You're going to help military families fight back from it. So we will do that over the next hour. But let's talk about the brochure law second opinion before we do that. Second opinion is um, quite simple. Any lending documents that you want us to look at, VA disability documents, Military insurance, SGLI, VGLI, TSGLI that you need us to look at. Camp Lejeune, you want to talk about what it would be like to file a claim, where we file it, what we do in those cases. Any other issue related to a military benefit right, legal claim, civilian injury claim, or, um, you know, we've we've got a, a couple of clients that were injured doing things with, with the government, um, consumer cases, right, consumer class action. We, we represent people. If you have a question, if your military family wants to know if you're leaving benefits on the table, give us a call, 904-201-1771, or reach out case, C-A-S-E, at brochulaw.com. Again, phonetically, Bravo, Romeo, Oscar, Charlie, Hotel, Uniform, brochulaw.com. And... Um, we also have a number of resources on our website, too. So if you want to learn more about Camp Lejeune or um, any of your military rights and benefits related to SGLI, VGLI, any other military areas, visit our website. Military Lending Act is, is what we're talking about today. So if you have a question and you want us to review any of your military installment loans, think, think loans that you have that are um, you have to pay back within six months to 36 months, um, credit cards, payday loans, timeshares, right? We're going to talk about all of those today. Yep. And what we're doing is we're going to look to see, has this company complied with federal law? Because what federal law says is that service members and their dependents, so active duty service members and their dependents, have greater per consumer protections than civilians, and there's a reason for it. And the reason is active duty service members and dependents move around a lot more. They need um, assistance trying to get, you know, if they've got somebody, to, if they've got a family member deployed overseas and now they're, they've got to move from one state to another state, they need help moving quickly, right? That they're, they're not given a whole lot of time to move. And, and we don't want, the whole purpose of the Military Lending Act is that DOD and, and Congress realized that we don't want companies taking advantage of military families. That makes sense to me, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. yeah, I'm with you. Loud and clear. I mean, I think I think personally anybody that takes advantage of military families, like the people that are protecting our country, probably deserve jail time. That's probably the most extreme and and likely uh not achievable, right? Cuz they're they're a company, you can't stick a company in jail. So what's the Try. only other remedy? Yeah. Well, you hold them accountable and you get damages. And in, in, on the civil side, damages equals money, right? That's mm -hmm. the only way you can hold these people accountable. And that's the biggest thing that we combat here is that when we find a company that is committing a violation against a civilian or against a military family, people need to fight back. People need to stand up and fight because even though it's $100, even though it's a $25 fee, even though it's $1,000, $1,000 is a lot of money. Yes. Right? I mean, to, to an individual, mm -hmm. right? But now to a company, that 1000 they've done this how many thousands of times? They just created a whole new revenue stream. Yeah. So the bottom line is this. The U.S. government in 2006, and D with DOD's help and report, recognized that military families were suffering from these predatory lenders people that were going after them, charging them usurious interest rates, so interest rates that exceed 36%, refinancing and rolling over 
these loans um, so that basically like this loan never goes away. Like you roll it over so many times that you're paying interest, 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 and it compounds so much you just never can dig your way out. Mm-hmm. Mandatory allotments, big issue. Um, naming a bank account as a security interest. So when you default, it automatically takes it out. These are things that we can get into today more. I know Scott and I did this on another episode. After that episode, I got a number of military families that reached out and said, hey, Chris, I want to learn more about this is the installment lender I got 2500 bucks from. Did this violate the law? And I'll tell you this, folks, if you are a service member dependent and you took out one of these installment loans um, or automobile loan, furniture loan, and we'll talk about there are some furniture loans and automobile loans that are not excluded. Most of them are excluded, but there are some that aren't. So installment loans, certain types of um, of automobile and, and furniture loans, and uh, what am I thinking of? Timeshares. Those are some of the, the main ones that we see where people are getting screwed. <coughs> so what we want to do is we want to see what the documents show because the loan disclosures tell the story. What we do, we take the disclosure, we do a little bit of math to figure out if they're exceeding 36%, if they refinanced it, if they required allotment as a condition to the loan, things like that. So... Let me let me ask you this, and I'm not sure if you're going to know the answer to this, but uh, I I do want to ask it and just at least get your take on it. Thirty six percent, Chris. Like, it's pretty high. It's pretty high. Is yeah. there a reason it's thirty six percent? I um I was not in that congressional committee meeting when they determined thirty six. Yeah, but it seems way too high anyway. I mean, we've got a we've got a class action right now for a service member that um is against a major military lender and um yeah we think we think that they violated federal law and i guess we're going to see how it shakes out i don't want to talk about it because it's ongoing sure. litigation but i will just say that um and i know that there are other companies that were screening and um yeah i think i just think that 36 percent is high enough there's no reason to go yeah any a yeah. point above that i mean it right it's just absurd. And and then the other part is it's not just that. It's refinancing. Like that loan was the result of a previous loan. So yeah. all of these loans are just evolving one after the other. They're just rolling into the next one. More interest, more fees, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't you you can't imagine how difficult it would be for somebody to climb their way out of a $1,200 loan. Yeah. You know, because, because of the fact that they're they're the loans are set up in a way where there's just no easy way to get out unless you had some lump sum to just throw at it. Right, right, right. I got you. Um, let's talk about this part of it, Chris, you're talking about the, the percentage and all of that, but what, what should military families be looking for, like a red flag, as we like to say? What should they be looking for to kind of know something's up? I mean, the first thing that you look at is if you are if you are sitting here listening right now and you have a loan document from anything that we mentioned, whether it's installment loan, payday loan, uh, debt consolidation loan, credit card, um, timeshare, any think of any lending, and you have a loan that is greater than 20%, Red flag, red flag, red flag, mm-hmm. right? Now, there are other things, and we'll talk about why there are certain automobile loans and personal property loans related to furniture that may be governed under the Military Lending Act, but yeah. we'll talk about that later and, and why those are kind of different from what I'm talking about right now. But if you're looking at your installment loan and it's, I would say, 20%, 15 20% or higher as the APR, that's what they're showing as a percentage. Mm-hmm. That's the first step because the APR is not the end of the story. The APR is is basically what they have to disclose to be in compliance with like Regulation Z and some of those laws. But the APR is different from the Military Lending Act, which is the MAPR. So the MAPR includes the APR, 
plus any ancillary products. Uh. Prepaid finance charges, right? Um, certain types of fees related to like um, origination or things like that that are that are basically like once you take out the loan, there's a gap between your first payment date and the date that the interest starts. So like those prepaid finance charges, those would be included in the loan. Ancillary products would be like um, when you buy a vehicle, the extended warranty, gap insurance. Like you don't need an extended warranty to buy a vehicle. Right. So that's that's why those arguably are not governed or excluded by the military lending app. Interesting. Uh, let's just – actually, eh, we'll do this. We'll, we'll talk about this part of it because I do have a question for you, but it's opinion-based. I'm not sure if you can answer it, but we'll do it uh, towards the end of the – uh, the segment here, but let's just talk about what is governed, what isn't. You mentioned it a couple of times, so let's just get into it. You mentioned timeshares, but just, I guess, just what is governed? Yeah, these? I I would say it's probably easiest to start with what w- may be excluded. Okay. And basically what, what happened is that Congress created the federal law in 06, but the, the true consumer protection part of the law didn't come out until around 2017. And that's why I screen these cases 2018, 2019 till now, because there's a five-year statute of limitation. So unfortunately, when somebody comes to me and they've, they're like, hey, Chris, I've got this loan slam dunk 55% from 2012. I wish we could because it is a disgusting interest rate. Mm-hmm. But based on the current law, we just wouldn't be able to assist. So 2018 to present day, service member, or dependent. And even right now, if you're listening and you are a veteran and you took out a loan in 2018 when you're active duty, you could still file a claim. It's it's when you took out the loan where you're active duty or a dependent. Um, So that's a good distinction. So what was your question? I just completely lost it. Uh, We were just talking about what's governed and you were going to start with what's not first. Exactly. The three things that would be excluded and I put I, I put this sort of as um, an asterisk because I don't think that these are wholly excluded. I think there are exceptions. Houses, right? Those would be excluded under the Military Lending Act. Automobile loans, right? Vehicle loans would be excluded. And personal property loans. Think like uh, like if you're renting furniture. right? Oh, okay. So a military family that's only in a – they need to furnish a house for three months. They're not going to go out – buy brand new. Right, right, right. You know, they don't they only need to rent furniture for a few months. So under the the Military Lending Act, those would be excluded, meaning they could charge hypothetically whatever they want, right? But what may drag them back into the Military Lending Act, meaning they'd have to follow the Military Lending Act rules, would be if you and this is what right now is on appeal at the Fourth Circuit. There's a case, one of the attorneys that I work with and do some class action work with one of the firms, they have this case on appeal in front of the fourth circuit. It's an automobile loan type case because what, what you do is you take all of these extended warranties, gap insurance, you know, the interest rate and all of this stuff. And under the military lending act, you apply it to the first payment. And if that exceeds 36%, they violated the law. That's the argument. Yeah. Here's how I know that that is what the government intended. That firm that has that case up in front of the <coughs> Fourth Circuit Court of Appeal, there is an amicus brief that was filed by the Department of Defense, or it could have been, I don't know if it was the United States, I don't know if it was the United States or the Department of Defense. doesn't matter. Same, same thing for purposes of what I'm saying. Yes. And the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau both said in their amicus brief that what the uh, service member in that case was arguing was uh, what was in violation of the Military Lending Act, meaning meaning that it was governed by the Military Lending Act. So whether it was in violation is up to the court, but based off of what the law has evolved into, it should meet the criteria. So. That tells you that the government is keeping an eye on all of these filings because they shouldn't be able to wiggle their way out of some of these bad loans. So that's an example of one where, you know, the automobile loan on its face would not be governed under the Military Lending Act. But when you add in gap insurance 
and extended warranties and things like that. And then there's it can get there, yeah. Yeah. And the main reason is that those ancillary products, the extended warranty, the gap insurance, are not required to purchase a vehicle. Right. Like you don't need to you don't need to pay eighteen hundred bucks to for an extended warranty to buy a vehicle. Yeah. I actually just didn't. I got a vehicle and yeah. didn't get the warranty. You would be proud of me. Chris. Good. I am I wish I could hug you. Yeah. <laughs> You're across the table. Yeah. All right. So here's my um here's my free legal advice of the day. And it's not legal advice, it's just personal advice. But it is free. It is free. Um extended warranties, I think, are probably my least favorite consumer product. I think it's just I don't know. If you if you if you file a claim, good luck. And if some reason you can win a judgment against them, they fold up like a like a lawn chair. So buyer beware. Yeah. That's my opinion. Um, if you sell extended warranties, I'm sorry, but um, that's just my my uh, personal opinion. I'm not a fan. I think it's a scam. Um, but other people might find them useful. I think I think we've talked about this before, but when you buy a phone, right, like Apple, like you know Apple Care yeah. protection. Yeah. I think something that is a warranty that is um, backed by the manufacturer. So if you buy a car and the warranty is through, you know, if you bought, say, a, a Jeep and the Jeep warranty is through, you know, the Jeep dealer or, or you know, the Jeep brand, brand yeah. that I think is a good warranty. Like, I think they'll stand by it. Mm-hmm. Same same as Apple. Like, I think if, if you had Apple Care and your phone went, they, they'll stand by their product. The extended warranties I'm talking about, folks, are the ones that are um, purchased through these third parties, like right. that are not that are not the person creating the consumer product, the people that are just selling an extended warranty. Yeah, those are the ones that you need to be aware of. Yeah, I, not to get off topic, Chris, but I was sitting there, I was like, you know who would be disappointed in me right now, Chris Brochu. <laughs> I'm not doing it. That's why I, I swear. Uh, and you make me so proud. That's I'm, good. I'm glad. All right, uh, to get back on track, but sort of. I I thought of this while you were talking uh, just a, a couple minutes ago, and it is an opinion question. I don't even know if you can answer it. But with to what you started the show with, right, a company does this and they the interest rate's too high and they know it and they do it a couple thousand times, right, you make money. In your opinion, because it doesn't get popped a lot of the time, like you're, you're working on that now, do you think that's why it keeps happening? Right, like if you're not going to get caught, you might as well keep doing it. If you're said company, is that how you look at? That's how I'm hearing it. Yeah. So I guess it it kind of comes down to a couple things. If the consumer, or in this case, you know, under the Military Lending Act, the consumer would be the the service member or their dependent. Mm-hmm. If they understand or believe that what they are getting is in compliance with federal law. Mm-hmm. So if they just looked up, you know, Military Lending Act, which is commonly um, in, confused with the Service Member Civil Relief Act, right? The SCRA. Um, and and SCRA is different, right? SCRA, depend, you know, if you had a loan before you went in the military and then deployed, you could get it reduced to 6%, right? Yeah. But that's separate from the Military Lending Act. So I think on its face, you know, even when I get these disclosures, on its face, it's like, oh, they only charged you 32% APR. But hold the phone. Yeah. That's not the end of the equation based on the Military Lending Act. So the other part of this, too, is that all of these companies have mandatory disclosures. So here's here's what they're required to do. In their agreement, they either have to have the MAPR showing you what the rate is, or they can have a 1-800 number where you can call and they'll give you the calculation. Interesting. Yeah. And um, that's one of the things that we investigate, too, because a lot of times the disclosures aren't there. They don't disclose MAPR, Uh, and they don't have the 1-800 number. Interesting. Yeah. And I guess with that... The, the APR and the MAPR, is it, I judging by what you just said, I'm going to say I feel like it's probably often, but the majority of people that probably could use your assistance right in this, they just look at the APR. Yeah, I mean, I don't, and I don't blame them. I mean, if before before I started hearing about Military Lending Act, I mean, most of, most of what I do 
like this is true. It evolves because a client has told me, hey, Chris, I think I got scammed on this. Can you just take a look? Mm -hmm. Like Military Lending Act was completely off of my radar until recently because I saw some military families that were having trouble with it. And now, you know, we've got one case filed and, and others in the works. So it's it really is a, a big issue. And it's it's difficult because the math on some of these disclosures. So before I really learned and read up on Military Lending Act, I would have looked at it and said, oh, the the APR is probably the same as the MAPR. End of story. Right. If I yeah. didn't if I was just a consumer and didn't right. didn't know that the Military Lending Act existed, I wouldn't even know about MAPR. I would just say, okay, like that seems pretty high, but I need the money, right? Yeah. Um but I think now that I've kind of seen a few of these cases and, and heard a few of the stories, what it boils down to is the math on some of these disclosures would make Pythagoras blush. I mean it's like you need a you need an accounting degree to figure out what's going on. Yeah, I mean it's like this isn't this isn't something that your um, your typical attorney that's gonna do an automobile accident. And I don't say this disrespectfully because mm-hmm. those are extremely difficult cases as well. But they wouldn't just pick this up and be like, oh, that's it. They viol- they they add these things together and do it. The the statute lays out how you add add it up yeah and if you weren't looking for it i mean it's it's hiding in plain sight and that's my opinion and i think that that there are a lot of military families out there that they just don't know like i don't think i don't think military families are dumb and don't realize it i think the military family is relying on the company these companies on their website i could pull up one right now one that we're investigating Mm -hmm. i could pull up the website for you you could read it and you would see on there mla compliant we, we follow the Military Lending Act. We're in compliance with it. We follow everything to the T. And meanwhile, in the same frequently asked question, they openly admit to violating one of the terms of the MLA, which is you can't refinance using proceeds from a previous loan to the same person. Hmm. Like it's like... It's right there, yeah. It, it, yeah, and, and again... But you just don't know what to look for. Right, and again, you know... It, it blows my mind that companies would be that cavalier with um, breaking federal law, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, and, and and the sad part of this equation is this is what you see nowadays. Some of these woke companies especially, mm-hmm. they will come up with some revenue stream, right? They, they charge some administrative fee that's low enough where nobody would want to sue over it individually. Yeah. And then if if somebody can bring a class action against them, they pay a fraction of that and and the the class is done and they just they just basically stole from a whole group of people. Yeah. You know? They and and they're not going to have to pay back the amount they stole because they're going to end up settling that case because it's too risky to bring it all the way. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can get a good deal it's better it's better for the whole group than go all the way and risk it all and get nothing yeah, yeah. so i don't know it's really it's really quite interesting and and that's why the timeshare one is is kind of a a hot topic right now so if you're if you're listening and you're you're an active duty service member or or dependent or you were between 2018 and present day and you took out a timeshare and you don't want to be in the timeshare anymore and you want us to help you Feel free to give us a call or feel free to um, send us your timeshare agreement or any of your loan documents. Yeah. We screen those. One of the things that um, these timeshare companies are doing is they're trying to they're trying to fit into the exclusion. Remember how we talked about the housing exclusion? Mm-hmm. And the re- here's the reason why those are excluded. Cars, furniture, you know, houses – those are property interests that are owned by the lender until you pay them off. So that vehicle that's worth 20000 is technically owned by the lender until you pay it off, right? Because if you don't pay, what happens? They take it. Right. Right. So, and it makes, it makes sense, right? Until you start adding all these ancillary products and the, the 
interest rate exceeds 36% and it's really 70 or something crazy. I've seen um, some that were absurdly higher than 36%, but that's one of the things that the timeshare companies try to do is they try to say, well, wait a second. We fit under the housing exclusion. Well, really? What's what's your property interest? What what physical property interest do you have in a timeshare? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if it if it's if it's a property interest and you're excluded, it's one thing. But I I don't think it is, and and that's why I've heard several consumer stories about people getting burned with timeshares. If you're stuck in one and you want us to take a look, and you're again, if you're if you took out the timeshare between 2018 and now. And when you took it out, you were active duty or the um, dependent, like spouse or or minor, you know, under 21. That's really what we're what we're screening for those types yeah. of claims. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is, at least to me, where the second opinion can really come in handy for somebody, right? You can yeah. just review their documents for free and see if you can help them. And listen, Chris, the one th- I'm going to look in the camera when I say this, right? Because there's a video version of the show. Thanks to Justin and Nova Production. It's on your website, brochulaw.com, and your YouTube as well. I am never going to advocate for anybody to do math. But, Chris, you're going to have to do math for these people because I know. I, I'm, I'm not asking you to do math. I'm asking Chris to do the math for you because he wants to help you. And that's the math that will get your number, could be over 36%. Chris will find that out. He'll do the math, or he has people to do the math. I don't know how good you are at math. But somebody's doing the math. Yeah, I mean, I do some math. Yeah, my mom's math. a CPA, so she'll help really? me. Uh, there we go. Back it up, but yeah, it's a, it's um, we can get we can get down to the bottom of it. Well, so. let Chris do the math for you. Take advantage of the brochure law second opinion. Yep. Let him look through your things and see if he can help you. And if he can, if you're paying more than thirty six percent, get. Chris can help you. Figure and remember, that out. remember, folks, you're gonna look at your lending documents, your disclosures, and I guarantee you, you're gonna say. Chris, it doesn't exceed 36%. I mean, I have clients right now that we're screening. They'll send me a loan. Oh, I didn't, I think that they required allotment as a condition to the loan. So I want to file for that. We take a look at the loan. Oh, they charge you 41%. Yeah. You know, and, but the, again, it's not the client's fault because the disclosure right. doesn't have the MAPR on it. Yes. The disclosure right. has the AP, APR. So the client sees it and they say, oh, well, 28 percent not not 36 if they know the military lending act but call us just let us let us take a look at your documents the only thing you will be out if we screen your document is your time right and then you will know that you are dealing with a legitimate company it's a win-win right yeah i think it is truly Truly. and and we we talk so much on this show about benefits on the table and and filing lawsuits and all of that i love america and i love good businesses so I'm not here to to sue everybody under the sun that's operating the right way. We're calling out bad business conduct. We're calling out the woke companies that are stealing from people. And we're trying to help better the lives of military families. So if your company is ripping off military families, you should stop. You should stop. I'm with that. I, I am absolutely with that. We got to take a quick break. When we come back, we talked a lot about what the Military Lending Act is, but how can you fight back? How can you uh, have the opportunity to get some of that money back? Chris will tell you, and he will explain that. On the on the other side of the break, 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. We'll be right back. The 7 o'clock hour, 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk, and we continue to protect military families with the one and only Chris Brochu talking the Military Lending Act today. A whole first segment on it, you can go back and listen, WOKV.com. You can go back on and listen on Chris's website, Chris's YouTube, BrochuLaw.com, BrochuLaw on YouTube. You can find a video version of the show. Thanks to Justin and Nova Productions. Me and Chris sitting here having a conversation, trying to help you, the military family, and how to not get scammed. And another way Chris is trying to help military families is by giving you lovable pets. Chris Brochu, please tell the people about Pets for Vets you got coming up with the Jacksonville Humane Society. We love pets. We love military families. So we are joining forces here. And um, Brochu Law is going to sponsor the adoption fee for um, 
pets on Veterans Day. So on November 11, 2022, um, my wife and I are going to be at Jacksonville Humane Society on Southside Boulevard in Jacksonville, the massive, beautiful facility that they have over there. Mm-hmm. And um, we don't know how many pets will still be up for adoption. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that number is varying. I mean, right now we've got, I think, 50 adoption slots. Um, So obviously we want you to get there as early as you can if you um, are trying to adopt a pet. And remember the the hours that the event is going to be going on from is noon until four. Mm -hmm. So you have to be within that time time frame. And I don't know. I think the Jack's Humane Society opens at noon anyway or maybe just before. Um, so if you're, if you want a four legged friend or you want to add to, um, your, your cats or dogs that you currently have, feel free to stop by so many great pets, um, you know, available and need a great home and, um, you know, adopted pets are great pets too. We talked about it before, but, um, you know, all the cats that, that I had growing up and, um, that we have are, are all adopted. So we, we just love them. So, absolutely absolutely yeah. it's a really really good cause and uh chris will be down there and if you are a veteran uh no adoption fee chris will cover that for you uh again as he mentioned still trying to figure out how many adoption slots there will be got some time to figure that out because it is coming up in november but we will continue to remind you of that because uh, i think it's a really cool thing chris is doing chris real quick also before we jump back into it because i think the second opinion it's always important right but i think especially this week with what we're talking about can really, really benefit military families. So if you missed it at the top, Chris, if you would just explain what you guys do at Brochu Law with your second opinion and how you may be able to help some military families. Absolutely, Casey. And if you want to see any of the other military lending stuff that we've talked about, um, you can re-listen on Spotify, re-watch on YouTube. I forgot to tell you we're on Spotify Apparently. now, too. Yeah, we got a, a good podcast, but um, it's similar. It is good show, it's, yeah. it's this, just without without the video, obviously. Um so second opinion for Military Lending Act, if you have loan disclosure documents that you want us to take a look at, so the final loan documents that you get before you purchase an automobile, a timeshare, an installment loan, a payday loan, a debt consolidation loan, anything that's related to, um, you know, there, there are certain types of lines of cre- personal lines of credit, things like that. When you get that final loan disclosure, it's going to show you a couple things. It's going to show you the amount financed. It's going to show you any finance charges, including prepaid finance. It's going to show you the APR. It's going to show you um, the start date, the financing start date. It's going to show you your first payment date. It's going to show you the um, monthly amount that you have to pay. It's going to show you the amount of months you have to pay. Those all go into the Military Lending Act calculation for us to tell um, or, or figure out if that loan exceeds 36%. Then what we're going to do is figure out, okay, did they require allotment? Did they make you put a bank account as a security interest? Was this loan that you have rolled in from another loan from proceeds um, that they had from another loan that, that they had given you? Send us your loan disclosures if you want us to take a look. Again, timeshares, installment loans, automobile loans for new for new vehicles, anything that you have finance that you want us to take a look at. And again, automobile loans and, and the um, furniture and stuff like that are mainly excluded. But if you have a vehicle that you bought with gap insurance or uh, an extended warranty or something like that, that may not be excluded. So we're happy to take a look. Second opinion's free. We'll take a look at your loan documents, figure out if the company that issued the loan is um, in compliance with federal law. If they are, great. You are working with a legitimate company. Um, and uh, if they're not, well, the company may have violated federal law. If we find that the company is um, it had, it has issued a, a loan that's in compliance or, or looks to be in compliance, then you don't owe us anything. So us reviewing that would be free. If we find that there is something that we think the company is doing that is unlawful, we would enter into a fee agreement. It's always a contingent fee for military families and consumers. We'll get you signed up with a fee agreement if you meet the criteria under under our firm criteria. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we advance all costs on behalf of military families and consumers. So the only way we get paid is if you get paid. 
Absolutely. And the new slogan I want to add, let Chris do the math for you. Wow. That's, that's It really is catchy. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. I know people don't want to do math, Chris. Oh, I'll give man. up on it. All right, we'll move on. Uh, when you were talking about that and we talked to you, – you said some, some things to me that I want you to explain a bit deeper because – I know that I don't fully understand them, so I want other people to understand them, like allotment, uh, bank account as security interest, like all those type of things. Let's start with that one, though, because you just said it, I believe. Bank account as a security interest. Is that Do I have that right? Uh-huh. Explain what that is. I think I have an idea of it, but at the same time, I want you to explain it. So basically, they the lender makes you put down a bank account, so if they don't get paid, it automatically comes out, which... Um, under the Military Lending Act is not permitted. Mm-hmm. So I've actually, I actually have it pulled up here just so that I can rip through it. But um, in that one, uh, yeah. So basically, for when a company gives you a loan, basically that loan would be governed under what's called the consumer credit. And when they extend that consumer credit, they cannot. Um, where is it? Sorry, I'm looking. To... All good. Yeah, here we go. So, so basically, it's just so that you know you you aren't putting a, a savings account or other financial account or an automobile like like this would be common. And so, another one that we didn't talk about would be pawn shop loans, right? Okay. They those are governed by the Military Lending Act. Interesting. So you can't you can't say okay, Casey. Here here's a good example for you. You can't say, all right, Casey, here's here's fifteen hundred dollars. If you don't pay us back, we now have access to your bank account and we know where to find the money. We can't the other thing the lender can't do, they can't say, Casey, here's your fifteen hundred. We're gonna keep the title to your loan, and when you don't pay that back, we're keeping your car. Yeah, that seems a bit much. Right. Yeah. All violates federal law. I would hope now, so. Now we aren't on this show here talking about the other civilian consumer statutes because they have you know basically all the civilian consumer statutes are building Mm -hmm. up to the military lending act so any service member dependent is not only governed by all the civilian laws consumer laws but also the military lending act but the military lending act is the cream of the crop for uh military families in terms of protection so that's why we're not going to get into regulation z and all that other stuff because mm-hmm. this is a show about protecting military families. So that's the bank account as a security interest title of a vehicle. They can't, they can't, um, the lender cannot make you put that up as a security interest so that if you default. Yeah. So, so basically, here's what happens you don't pay your 1500 back. They just keep taking your money. Yeah. But what they can't do that. So, what they're supposed to do if they're following the law, uh-huh. they issue you your 1500 in this example. You default on it, they sue you to get it back and get a judgment against you. Uh, That's what they should be doing. Gotcha. So they shouldn't be in, dipping their hand into in your, your piggy bank to get the money back. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Uh, how about, uh, I heard you say allotment. What are yeah. We, yeah. Allotment's one that every military family will know, whether you're dependent or, or not. And the reason is allotment to the military would be similar to how, um, you know, you you get, think of... It, and again, allotment doesn't necessarily mean pre-tax, so don't think of it like that. But just think of, think of what comes out of your uh, check before it hits your bank account, right? So allotment isn't necessarily pre-tax, but it it's taken out before you get your money to your bank account. I got you. And every military family knows that to set up an allotment, you go through DFAS, right? That DFAS helps you set it up, and um, basically the reason why allotment was created. And it, initially, allotment was super helpful, right? Because before the the invention of the internet and before people had computers, you've got people all over the world, and you got to pay, you know, the the local bank back or whatever. Right. It's super tough to make sure that you time, you know, the mail right and all of that stuff. So allotment was a good way to just say, hey, make sure it comes out every month. Yeah. <laughs> the trouble with allotment is. We don't need it anymore. Right. Because allotment often costs money to the per- to the military family because they're using it because it's a third-party service. And even if it doesn't, the other reason that you'd much prefer to pay back with 
you know, your own check or some other mean, right, direct deposit or something like that, is that when you use a financial institution, you are protected under the FDIC, right? Federal law is going to say, okay, Casey, when you, um, you know, you in this example pay this, but you dispute the interest rate, you dispute the fee, right, the administration fee or the late fee or whatever, if you dispute that with your bank, your bank is required to dispute that with the lender. Federal law, right? Mm-hmm. They've got to get that money back on your behalf. When you do allotment, allotment is with the lender and the military. Nothing is nothing is protected. Right. There's no there's no federal protection. Like if here's a good example. You give your credit card, right? Mm-hmm. And you use it at a store and somebody steals it. Okay. They make, you know, a $50 purchase for whatever, and you're like, oh, my God, somebody stole my credit card. You call your credit card company, they're going to fight that, right? right? And they're going to say, okay, yeah, somebody stole it. What happens with these companies is they are setting up allotment, and now when the military family is in one of these unlawful loans, not only may they be paying interest rates that exceed 36%, but that company is guaranteeing payment. So here's the other reason why it's bad. It's bad because it's difficult to dispute unlawful fees and charges. But the other reason it's bad is once it's started, it's difficult to stop. So if you're if you're in a loan, right? Let's say you owe, I don't even know, hypothetically, you have uh, $300 a month that you're paying back in this installment loan. And your family is in the middle of a move. And you're like, man, we got to pay rent in this in this, in our old lease, we've got to pay rent or a security deposit in our new lease. We've got all these moving things, right? Well, if you didn't have allotment set up, well, maybe you just pay the minimum or miss that payment or something. Right. But you can get it caught up in a couple months probably. Why allotment is so harmful to military families and why DOD has recognized it, in that scenario I just gave where that that military family is maybe tight on cash that month, the first person getting paid is the lender Mm. without the military family having any say. Yeah. So now it's like, well, the lender's getting paid, but the military family's got to figure out, are they keeping their lights on this month? Are they paying for their house this month? Are they, it's, it's just backwards. And that's what, what DOD recognizes. That's why DOD does not allow mandatory allotment as a condition to a loan. Yeah. You can you can make that choice if you want to, but it, it can't be a condition. And gotcha. it is. There are companies out there doing it. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy stuff. I know you probably have a couple others uh, on on your list. I know I just wrote down allotment and then the the bank account thing, but if you have any others, please. Yeah, mandatory arbitration's a big yeah. one. So so um any company that says, "Hey, you can't you can't file a lawsuit against us." Well, no, that's false. Um because it literally says here under the MLA, the Military Lending Act does not um, allow for mandatory arbitration. So um, anyone that basically requires a borrower to submit to arbitration or impro- or imposes, this is under the statute, imposes onerous legal notice provisions, um, so that's unlawful. So basically what it says is this company that's doing this bad conduct cannot um, hide in arbitration. Arbitration serves – arbitration – was created so that businesses could dispute against each other without having to air out their dirty laundry in public. I got you. In recent years, what it's been used for is companies to kind of keep the lid on some stuff. My personal opinion, mm-hmm. again, I don't have any um, any case studies to back this up. But right. That's just my own opinion. So, um, and I've I've litigated cases in jams and AAA arbitration. I mean, it's not it's not terrible. It's there there are. Um, reasons why arbitration is beneficial but there are also uh reasons why it wouldn't like under the mla it wouldn't be good for to require service members to go to or submit to arbitration um the other big one too that that we had talked about during the break and and that um is a is a huge problem is using and i just want to read this so it's basically Extended consumer credit from the same creditor with the proceeds of other credit to the same military family. 
So basically think like rolling it over, yeah. right? You have one loan and then you need to roll it into another loan or you renew it or you consolidate it or you refinance it, right? I think we just named every synonym for True. refinancing. Right. Um, but under the Military Lending Act, when the creditor rolls it over, renews it, repays it, refinances it, consolidates it, and it's proceeds from another loan or an other loan that the lender issued to the same military family, that would violate federal law. Got so it. in the cases that we screen, it's not always limited to, did they make the proper disclosure? Did the loan exceed 36%? You know, was arbitration required? Did they have a bank account as a security interest, right? It's sometimes a number of things. I mean, they might commit two or three, two or three violations. Yeah. Which brings us to penalties. Yeah. And that's important. Under federal law, there's a statutory award of at least $500 per violation. Ah. So we're going to talk. We're, uh, I'm just going to kind of unpack this for a second. Then yeah, we'll yeah. talk about the damages, like like how, you know, there's there's um, under under the MLA, the Military Lending Act, there's a way to that basically if the loan is uh, or if the loan violates federal law, it's void from inception. So it's as if it's canceled. Yeah. Right? But with um, – with the penalties, the statutory award of five hundred dollars, right, per violation would be oh, they required allotment as a condition to a loan violation. They allowed you to roll that into a new loan violation. Bank account as a security interest violation. Every time they violate federal law, five hundred dollars statutory damages to the military uh, service member or dependent. That doesn't count the um the ability to get back the um this is under the statute any interest right so you could disgorge the interest if they were if they were charging you a usurious rate that it exceeds 36 percent, you could try to get um your payments back that you made for interest because the loan is void from inception if you're still in the loan the um, loan would be void the um, lender or the at-fault party would also be required to pay for your attorney's fees and costs if you were found liable. And then there are other things as well. I mean, if there's, if there's, um, if there's evidence that this conduct is reoccurring, I mean, it's punitive damages. They allow consequential damages. I mean, the the statute is extremely, extremely protective of military families and the specific language is any actual damage sustained as a result, but not less than $500 for each violation, appropriate punitive, appropriate equitable and declaratory relief. And then, um, obviously we talked about attorney's fees and costs. Yeah. So, so that's how we can represent military families without charging up front is that we advance the costs and we advance Basically, our hours, our man hours into the case, and if we win, the other party That's is required right. to pay our fees and costs. Yeah. The losing, basically, the, the lender or yeah. whoever. So, you know, I suing. mean, depending on the amount of violations and whatnot, but you could have a military family where not only are they paying your costs, but they're getting their interest back, and they've got, you know, $500 per violation. Like, this could be really valuable. I right. Mean, I mean, if not some, even could be, it would be. I, I think it is a great consumer protection statute because if a service member or dependent listing right now has already paid off one of those loans, they could get their interest back plus get these statutory awards. If they're if they're trapped in a loan, which is quite common, you know, like some of the loans we see, it would take years to get out of. I mean, even if you roll it over and renew it, you're just Yeah. I mean it's building. It sucks the life out of you. And yeah. and um so we can get them out of, out of the loans. I mean, they're void. They're void from inception if you if you can prove that the company violated federal law. So that's why I think it's so great is because the service member can get out of this loan and get recouped for whatever uh, interest that they paid if it's a bad loan, and they don't have to pay us to do it. 
the company does if we win. And here's the thing. If we don't win, well, you don't owe us anything because it's contingent, sure. yeah. you know? So Absolutely. it's it's really a, it's a great way for military families to fight back. And we need, the thing is, like, we need military families that are willing to stand up and fight. Yeah. Because this conduct occurs every single day. Absolutely. Always. Uh, just about a minute left in the show, Chris, but you mentioned it, how to fight back for military families. Is it as easy as gathering the documentation that you know you're going to need and then contacting you? I mean, is that what it takes? Yeah, and, you know, if you can send us, you know, uh, loan disclosure or anything like that, we can calculate on our end. And, um, you know, we take these cases all over the country in federal court. Uh, we're, you know, I'm licensed in the state of Florida. You know, obviously I'm licensed in, in all the federal district courts here in Florida, but with special permission from federal courts in other districts, and local council, we're allowed to file these all over the country. So if you live in a state outside of Florida and you need us to help you, we're happy to screen it. Um, and obviously, we've got to get permission from that federal court to be admitted there for that case only. They call it Pro Hoc Vice, but we're happy to take a look. We want to help you fight back. And, um, you know, if you know somebody that's a mili- active duty military or dependent that needs uh, this information or that's had difficulty with their finances. I know this is a tough topic. Like it is super difficult to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to talk about when they win big in the stock market or right. when they get a raise or a promotion or anything like that. Nobody wants to talk about when they get burned, but we're going to, um, destigmatize that because the only way that we are going to be able to, um, protect military families is if people know that, this conduct is going on yeah. and how we stop the harm. So if you need us, please send us your loan documents. If you know somebody that needs our help, feel free to spread the word. And, um, you know, as always, 904-201-1771 or case at com. And that's how you get in contact with them. Chris, another another episode down protecting military families with Chris Brochu. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. and We'll do it again next week. You too, Casey.